Hello, my dear friends. Welcome back to another episode of Dr. Arya's vlog. Today, in this lecture, I would like to discuss Facebook transfer. In the previous lecture, we we have discussed the various parts of a Facebook and the bite fork preparation. Today, moving to the Facebook transfer. So, coming to the patient preparation. Here, in this picture, it clearly shows the bite fork. Accurately see the bite fork into the patient. Okay, here it is the bite fork. Placing two cotton rolls between the mandibular occlusal surface and underside of the bite fork. Okay, and applying some petrol and jelly on the stem end of the bite fork. Here, this is the stem end of the bite fork. And instruct the patient to gently close and firmly support the bite fork in this accurate and immobile maxillary occlusal registration. Then the imprint or the registration of the maxillary shall be used for orienting the apicus to the articulator. Okay, and no concern is to be given to the mandible as its function in this instance is only to hold the bite fork securely against the maxillary arch. So that is the about the seating of the prepared bite fork to the patient. Okay. In this picture, this picture shows the stem of the bite fork entering the loose bite fork clamp. Okay. Here, slide the clamp onto the stem. Okay. Slide the this clamp to the stem of the bite fork. Here it is the 4 cm. Okay. And then spring open the bow. Okay. This bow should be spring open and swing it downward as to allow the ear pieces to enter the external auditory meander. So, number one, that is slide the clamp onto the stem. Here it is 4 cm. This is the stem of the bite fork and this is bite fork clamp. Number two is spring open. Okay, then the bow should be spring open and swing it downward. Third number, okay. For what? To allow the ear pieces to enter the external auditory meatus. Okay. In this picture, it shows slightly loosen the spring loaded thumb screw that secures anterior patient reference. Here it is the orbital pointer, orbital pointer and it is a anterior patient reference. So, slightly loosen this spring loaded thumb screw. Okay. Carefully rotate this reference pointer to a proximity with the patient's infraorbital notch. Here it is the patient's infraorbital notch. And elevate the bow at the transfer rod. This is the transfer rod. Elevate the bow to align the top of this reference with the patient's orbital. Okay, so uh, the bow should be elevated at the transfer rod to align this top of this reference with the patient's orbital. And this patient landmark is the lowest point on the infraorbital rim and it is the anterior reference of the Frankfurt horizontal plane. Okay, so the anterior reference for the FH plane is this lowest point of infraorbital rim. Then the top of the earpiece, here it is the earpiece. Top of the earpiece, it relates against porion. Okay, which is said to be the posterior reference of the Frankfurt. So anterior reference is the lowest point on the infraorbital rim and the posterior reference is porion. Okay. Porion is the, this one here, the top of the earpiece relates second is the porion, which is said to be posterior reference of Frankfurt plane. The superior surface of the temple portion of bow now visually represents the FH plane. Okay. Then tighten the clamp thumb screws in the suggested order. 
grasping the bow to offset torquing and patient discomfort. Trial run of these clamps is suggested before the patient application to recognize the amount of tightening necessary. Okay. Okay, next one is the thumb screw tightening. Okay, here this picture shows the thumb screw tightening. Okay, and this is the transfer clamp assembly. Okay, so here this one is the number one. It holds the right side of the bow. While securing the transverse clamp to the transfer rod. This is the transfer clamp, transverse clamp, and this is the transfer rod. While securing this one, the thumb screw number one should hold. Okay. So it holds the right side of the bow while securing the transverse clamp to the transfer rod. Carefully rotate the anterior patient reference away from the patient. And store this reference by swinging it forward to the right temple of the bow and lightly engage the thumb screw. This number is the uh, thumb screw number 2. It holds the right side of the bow while tightening the bite for clamp to the transverse rod. Okay. So this one is the bite for clamp and this one is the transverse rod. This one is the transverse rod. So while securing this Bite for clamp and the transverse rod, then thumb screw number two. It holds the right side of the bow. Okay. Then third one is the this one is thumb screw number three. It continues to hold the right corner of the bow and tighten the bite for clamp to the stem of the bite fork. Okay. So this one is the number three. It holds the right corner of the bow and tighten the bite for clamp. This one is the bite for clamp to the stem of the bite. This one is the stem of the bite. So here the it holds the right corner of the bow and tighten the bite for clamp to the stem of the bite. Okay. So that is about the thumb screw tightening. The next one is the what is the procedure that is taking out of the face. Okay. Instruct the patient to open, releasing the bite fork registration from the maxillary dental arch. Grasp the posterior ends of the bow and release the earpieces from the meatus. Withdraw the complete assembly from the patient with the bite fork index rigidly attached to the bow. Spring bow may be compromised by inadequately tightened thumb screws. Thumb screws may additionally be secured by a wrench. Tighten the socket screw head of the thumb screw in the absolute order number 1, 2 and 3. Okay. Okay, these are the reference points. As we already said, anterior reference point is infraorbital notch and the posterior reference point is porium. Okay. This is an archon articulator and this is a non-archon articulator. Okay, what is an archon articulator? Here the condylar element is attached to the lower member of the articulator and the condylar guidance is attached to the upper member. So condylar guidance is in the upper member. Here it is the condylar guidance in the upper member and the condylar element is attached to the Lower member. Okay. So that is about the archon articulator. And in non archon articulator, the condylar element is attached to the upper member of the articulator and the condylar guidance is attached to the lower member. So condylar guidance is attached to the lower member and the condylar element is attached to the upper member. That is the difference between the archon and non archon articulator. Okay. And here in this picture, it shows the adjustable incisal guidance. Here is the incisal guidance. And there is a adjustable incisal guidance which is present at the anterior end of the horizontal arm. Okay. And the right vertical arm here, in this picture, it shows the, this is the condylar element. 
This is the condylar shaft and this is the roll pin. Okay, right vertical arm of the lower member is shown here. Here it is the condylar element. Here it is the condylar shaft and here it is the roll pin. Okay, and this one is the anterior view of the lower member. This is the lower member and this is the anterior view of the lower member. Here the condylar elements are found projecting on the inner aspect of the vertical arm and the roll pins are found projecting on the outer aspect. Okay, here it is the roll pin, here it is the condylar shaft and here it is the condylar element. Okay, in this picture it shows the condylar element articulates with the condylar guidance or condylar track or slot to represent TMG. Okay, chamfer mandibular joint. So here it is the condylar element which articulates with the condylar guidance to represent the chamfer mandibular joint. Okay. In this picture, it shows the condylar guidance in the upper member is capable of rotation in both. Okay. Vertical as well as transverse axis. Here is the vertical rotation and here is the transverse axis rotation. Okay. So the condylar guidance in the upper member is capable of rotation in both vertical and transverse axis. In this picture it shows closed track condylar guidance. Here it is the condylar element in the lower member. Here is the condylar track. Then here it is the centric stop. Then here it is the condylar rim. In this picture, it shows open track condylar guidance in a whip mix 8500 series articulate. Now the absence of condylar rim in the anterior aspect of condylar guidance track. Okay. In this picture, it shows. Here it is the incisive table locking screw. The lateral view of the incisive gate table is shown here. The incisive gate table can be tilted. Here it is the incisive gate table which can be tilted as required in the transverse axis. This is the lateral view of the incisive gate. Okay. And incisive gate as shown should be kept horizontal and the incised pin in the center before articulation. It is in the center before articulation. Okay, it should be in the center and also the incisor guidance should be in the should be kept horizontal. And in this picture shows the anterior view of the incisor gate table. Okay, the central rectangular portion and two lateral wings are visible. This is the lateral wing lock screws are there. Here it is the lateral wings. Okay, central rectangular portion and the two lateral wings are visible. The whole assembly can be rotated in the transverse axis. Inclination of the lateral wing can be altered to elicit the excursive movements. And this picture, anterior teeth arrangement should be tried in and the overjet and overbite should be adjusted prior to setting the incisor gains on the arc. That's all for today's lecture. In the next video, we will discuss about the mounting procedures in detail. Thanks for watching. Please do like, share and subscribe my channel. Thank you.